Hello and welcome to our Good Friday service. We are going to spend the next half hour together. Thank you for joining us. We will be reading scripture and singing together. We'll have a kid's lesson, a brief reflection on what we are celebrating today, as well as partaking of communion together. You can get communion ready if you want at this time. So you can use something as simple as bread or crackers to represent the body of Christ and juice if you have it, even water, to represent the blood of Christ. And we'll be doing that towards the end of our service together. We're going to start by reading scripture around the events of Good Friday. And I will be reading select portions from Matthew chapter 27. You can follow along. The words will be at the bottom of your screen. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Above his head they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. When the centurion and those who were with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Welcome to our Good Friday service. Uh, we're so happy that you've joined us. Um, we're just going to reflect on Jesus' death with a few songs. Please join us.
There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you, Jesus. There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. Where my heart has peace with God, forgiveness. For all the love I've ever found like a flood flowing down at the cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in awe of you I'm in awe of you where your Lord plan red and my sin washed white I owe to you I owe to you. Oh, here my hope is found, here on holy ground, here I bow down, here I bow down, here arms open wide, here you saved my life, here I bow down, here I bow down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you. I owe Good morning, kids. Today is Good Friday. Good Friday is the day we remember that Jesus died on the cross. A couple days ago on Palm Sunday, we talked about how excited everyone in Jerusalem was for Jesus to come and save them. When Jesus came into the city riding on a donkey, do you remember what they shouted? They shouted, Hosanna! And Hosanna means save us. Lots of people thought Jesus was going to save them by becoming their king and fighting their enemies. But you know what? Jesus had a different plan. He didn't just want to save people from their enemies. He wanted to rescue them from their sins. And his plan wasn't to fight people. His plan was to die on the cross. Jesus loves people so much, and he knows that the punishment for our sins is that we have to die and be far from God. But he doesn't want us to be far from God, and he wants us to live forever with him. So he took the punishment for us. He let people hurt him and call him names and put him on a cross to die, all so that we wouldn't have to be punished all for us to be close to God, and all for us to be able to live forever in heaven with him. So Good Friday might not sound like a very good day because Jesus had to die, 
But we call it Good Friday because Jesus' plan to die meant that we didn't have to go through our punishment and it made us close to God. And that is very good. And Jesus dying isn't the end of the story. Easter Sunday is coming, and that's the day we celebrate that Jesus is so powerful, even death cannot beat him. But today, on Good Friday, we spend some time thinking about the amazing thing that Jesus did for us by dying on the cross, and we thank him for taking our punishment for us. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for taking our punishment. We love you, and today we spend some time thinking and thanking you for the sacrifice you made. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening today, kids. Last Sunday, on Palm Sunday, we began Holy Week by looking into Jesus' entry into Jerusalem in Matthew 21. Here's a brief recap of that, which helps set up today's Good Friday reflection. So the scene is Jesus' arrival at Jerusalem. The disciples are probably wondering, how is Jesus going to make his grand entrance? But what does Jesus do? He says, go and get me a donkey. And the donkey is in direct contrast to the war horse of a military leader. He doesn't come to wage war, but to wash feet. Main application, which is this. Jesus comes to us in humble and unexpected ways. What Jesus shows us in the last week of his life by riding in on a donkey, washing his disciples feet on Thursday night and humbly going to the cross on Friday is that he associates most closely with the lowly, the hurting, the suffering, and especially the humble of heart. No one, no race, no class, no gender, no ability group has hierarchy over another or has an edge in spiritual standing before God. What we're reminded of on Palm Sunday is that he is the humble king, the God of humility who loves humility, the part of God's humility that he takes weak men and women like me and you, fills us with himself through his spirits. It's this amazing divine treasure in fragile jars of clay. Well, indeed, he is the humble king. And perhaps nowhere is that more true and evident than in the events of Good Friday, which we remember today. The depths of the cross can never really be fully comprehended. I'm constantly in awe of the unending meaning of the wonderful cross and its paradoxes and scandal. And part of the message of the cross is a God who can relate to even the most broken, even despised of society. At the cross, Jesus continues what is really the theme of Holy Week the last week of his life, what he did on Palm Sunday by riding in on a lowly donkey, the way on Thursday night he washes his disciples' feet. He is the humble king, the humble servant, and on Good Friday becomes the humble sacrifice for all of our sin and brokenness. A death that took place in really the most shameful way to die. A death on a cross. The type of death that was reserved for criminals and the lowest of the low and the scum of society. So why did Jesus choose? And yes, it was a choice. Why did he choose death on a cross? This kind of death. Well, it's because he identifies with and even dies for even the most despised of society, the forgotten, ignored, displaced, the most hurt and broken of people. They can all gather around the cross and identify with a God who is able to identify with them no matter what their situation 
See, by dying on a cross, Jesus not only becomes the sacrifice for our sin, not only identifies with sinners, but also takes on and identifies with all the effects of sin and brokenness of our world. What Jesus is saying through his death on a despised cross is I can relate. Are you lonely? Jesus died a lonely death on the cross. Do you feel abandoned? Jesus was deserted by many of his closest friends who were nowhere to be found in his greatest time of need. Have you been let down? Jesus gets it and understands. Do you feel forsaken? Jesus cried out on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have you been wrongfully accused? Well, Jesus knows just what's that like, what that's like. Are you struggling with a, a disability or ailment of some sort, whether physical, mental, or some other kind of suffering? Well, Jesus understands your physical and mental anguish. He is the disabled God on a cross. Have you been mocked and had insults hurled at you? Have you suffered verbal abuse? Well, they mocked Jesus by sarcastically writing King of the Jews above his head, and those who passed by hurled insults at him and shook their heads at him and mocked him. Have you been violated? physically or some other kind of way? Have you suffered violence, whether physical or sexual abuse, robbing you of your dignity? Well, Jesus was stripped of his clothes on the cross and therefore of his dignity as they divided his clothes and cast lots for them right in front of him, humiliating him. The God, of the, under, the God of the universe understands what that's like. Have you been the violator, a criminal? Well, he died a criminal's death among other criminals so that you might be forgiven. And do you just feel maybe like you're struggling to stay alive, barely breathing, so to speak, well, he's been there too. And the list could go on. The point is this. The message of the cross is that no one is outside of God's reach and understanding. He is a friend to the broken, the weak, the despised, the ones who have been hurt and the ones who have caused the hurt. His arms of love and forgiveness are available to all who call on his name and draw close and humble themselves before his cross. He chose this way of death for a reason so that he can say to you, my son, my daughter, I can relate. It is a wonderful cross. The depths of its mystery cannot be fully described or articulated. It is multi-layered, multi-dimensional. It is the most beautiful, mysterious, powerful event the world has ever known. It is the one thing we're spending our lives in devotion to, giving our lives to this beautiful man dying on a despised and yet wonderful cross. So let's show our devotion by singing about this wonderful cross before we then move to communion. So you can get your communion 
elements ready, whether it's bread or juice or cup. But let's first reflect on and sing about our wonderful Savior who died on a wonderful cross, who can look at you with eyes of love and relate to whatever you've been through, whatever hurts, whatever pain, whatever shame, whatever sorrow. He is not a God far removed. He is a God who is very near, who is very close, who you can come to in your time of need. That's the message of the cross. Let's sing about it together. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of glory died, my richest gain I count.
just take a quiet moment of reflection to remember his death for us, all he did to show us he is near to us. No matter how broken, how bad, how lost, how disillusioned we feel, he is close to all those who call on his name. Let's remember his death. Now take a moment to confess your sins, those things which we have done and left undone. So, friends, if you have confessed your sins, know that God has forgiven them and that you may become boldly to his table of mercy. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the humble gifts of God for the people of God. And so, on behalf of Christ, I offer you this invitation to come to this table you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been in a long time, perhaps even never. You who feel close to Jesus. And then especially those of you who perhaps feel far away today. Come. It is Christ who invites us through his infinite mercy to meet him here at this table. And so we say, come Holy Spirit, would you meet us here through the bread and through the cup. The gospel writer Matthew tells us that while they were still eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body and represents his body broken for us. And so go ahead and feed on him in your hearts by faith. And then he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And so we say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us drink the cup with thanksgiving.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We want to take a moment to just tell you that we love you. We're sorry for how much we can forget what it is that you've done for us, but we are grateful. Thank you for taking our sins away. Amen. We're so happy you chose to enter in to these important days that reflect the final days of Jesus' life. And we're going to continue this weekend. We encourage you to join us tomorrow for our Easter family scavenger hunt. There are still spots available, and you can go to the homepage of our website, scroll down and look for the uh, Easter scavenger hunt graphic and just click on that, and uh, that'll take you to the registration there and you must register for that so we look forward to seeing some of you tomorrow and participating in that with you don't forget that we are gathering on easter sunday we have two outdoor services at 9 and 11 you must register ahead of time that registration is available uh, right on our website just look for uh, the button on the home page there and read over some of the instructions and register uh, there there are three types of registration for each service and time there's kind of the normal outdoor there's also select vehicle reg registration for those uh, who want to or agree to stay in their vehicle the entire time and just roll your windows down and, and uh, hear what's going on. And then there's also a registration for kids. So if you have kids and you plan to drop them off, don't register them for the outdoor, register them separately for the kids program at that same time. So we look forward to celebrating that with you. If uh, you're watching this morning and you'd like to know how to give uh, to help us to continue to uh, reach people through all these different mediums, uh, online, live stream, outdoor services, and all that uh, goes into doing this and all the things we do in the community, you can go to oceansidecc.ca slash give for all the options. Well, as you enter into the dark hours of this Good Friday and the silence of Holy Saturday. May the Lord do a deep work in your hearts as you anticipate and wait for his resurrection. Until then, we wait for Sunday. We'll see you then.